Welcome back, Zerke fans, to the June 2018 1v1 tournament when the final Swiss round is going to be Orphelius versus Rar up first. As actually, they, those players are not the top, but FFC is playing the bottom or Paul Bello, which is not the bottom seed, but still pretty low down. I don't really think it's going to be much of a contest. And 400 is playing against Major Obvious. Same thing. Major Obvious is at the bottom of the ladder. So it's yeah. Rar and Aphelius. That to me is the most competitive game in this ser oh, most competitive game in this series. So we're gonna have that in right now. Setting that up because oh, well, Orphelius getting really concerned about the fact that the LO rating suggests that they've got like a one in three chance to win, but eh, we'll see what happens. It is best of one. Trojan Hills is not a map you can really do anything cheesy on, but it is best of one. So you know, there's a possibility. I don't think it's necessarily a great possibility, but it is still a possibility. Vaguely, maybe, possibly. Okay, what is... Hmm. <clears throat> Alright, well, it looks like at this point we are going to be getting... Ah, there we go. There's the start. We're going in! I don't want to see what is going to happen here. Ophelia is starting on the southeast side of the map with Cloakie. This is not... This is not normal. Normally, RAR, that's normal. Where Rar starting, that's the aggressive start, and then they have the more passive start here. Orphelius, I almost feel like they're trying to do a similar thing to what we saw Paul Bello do in the previous game, which is go for where they expect their opponent's not going to look, and use that as a cheese base. Except for the fact that they're starting with glaives. Like, one glaive. One glaive is not going to be able to deal with a commander. That's just not enough. Still, though, the, the way that Orphelius is set up, they are going to theoretically be able to push in pretty quick. On the other hand... It's not like it's that much closer or that much faster than starting here. Like, this path compared to this path, it, it's pretty much the same. So I don't expect it to be a major difference, but I do expect that this glaive is going to be able to find some mileage. I mean, at the very least, this one metal extractor is open. Ophelia is not going for it, but it still is. It's open. There's nothing stopping that. And here's Raw coming in with the bandit on the... Okay, I guess bandit on, on convict is always a good idea. They are expanding... About as quick as they were last time. I guess the Fairyland map wasn't the spider so much as just they want to make sure that their stuff's safe, which is prudent. I mean, I've always said kill the workers because the workers, if you kill those, it's going to take another minute or so for an expansion to be built up. For the time it takes to rebuild a worker and send it back over, is way more useful than killing off the metal extractors. And most high level players do know that. I mean, I say that because high level players do it and because it works so well. Orphelius, however, is going for it, but not able to manage to succeed that. And whoa, what? Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's game. I guess Orphelius wanted to try the cheese and then the sort of cheese. It wasn't That wasn't cheese, though. It was like early gunship or something. Wow, okay. Orphelius just throwing in the towel. It's kind of a jerk move. All right. Well, anyway, that aside, I mean, that is actually kind of a jerk move. For, for the record, anyone watching, if you want to forfeit forfeit. Don't throw. If you're going to play the game, play the game. If you're going to forfeit, forfeit. Don't play the game and then throw. That's... That is kind of rude. And by kind of, I mean very. Don't do it. It's a bit of a jerk move. Anyway, let's move on to another game, presumably with players who actually want to play the game for any length of time, who haven't gotten so tilted that they'd rather forfeit, which, again, forfeiture is a thing you are allowed to do. Man, let's try Paul. Let's see what Paul Bello does against FFC. I think FFC is gonna have a bit of an easier time, but I, just, I don't know. I'm curious how Paul Bello is playing. They, their start in the last map really intrigued me, and I can see that they have some macro skill. So what are they gonna do? I don't know. That that to me is an important question right now. And the answer is going to be oh, do a very similar thing actually. <laughs> Okay, so this is the game that I thought we'd see off for Ophelius. Early start over in the southeast side of the map. Paul Bello going for spiders. Not going for Cloakie. He's going for spiders instead. But spiders, I'd say, are a bit cheesier. Or at least allow for kind of scouting that makes it work. Spider against Jump Bot, though. I don't know. I think Spider does have some advantages here. Like the fact that they have... Well, actually, I guess they don't have advantages. I guess the redback, the recluses are quite long range. The redbacks have a decent amount of of health. I think it's like I don't think it's over eight hundred though. I have to double check. I'm trying to remember. Why do I remember redback health? Nine hundred. I'm right. Yeah, it is. 
It is more than the damage that a moderator will deal in one shot. They only deal 500. Moderators will two-shot the red back. They won't one-shot it. They will, however, kill a damaged flea. Sorry, damaged venom. They will have everything one-shots the flea. They will have to kill a damaged venom, though. But hey, venom against pyro is still a matchup that venom, if not damaged, will have an easy time with. It's just that Paul Bello hasn't really built up a whole lot of follow-up force, and FFC is doing a great job expanding. This is the reason why this section is often used for aggressively, because it's got such great access to the center of the map, and to one of these hills, and to the back as well. It kind of protects that. This section here is entirely in a corner, so it can go out, but it only has like 10 metal per second available. Maybe, okay, another, it has like 15, maybe 20 metal per second that's reasonably available. From this position, you get 10 almost for free, get another 8 almost, or 6 almost for free, so you get 16 with very little risk, and then the hill over here, and now you get the center of the map, and you can still get the side stuff. Like, it's a lot easier to defend all this stuff basically for free, whereas this is highly risky. This is harder from the southeast, and this expansion over here is about as risky as the center of the map, honestly. So, and the hills are out. The hills are completely out. So yeah, FFC's starting position is a safer and more useful starting position overall. Paul Bellows is kind of useful in a sense as a counter starting position, but not so much. Red Comet it works because the units are faster than get that harassment in before your opponents have a large amount of defenses set up, or enough units set up to deal with it. Trojan Hills, the map is a bit hillier, you're not likely to go for vehicles on it, and so it's a lot harder to get the units into your opponent's base in time. Now we're going to see these fleas burn to death in the pyro. The pyro cannot really fail here. Like, really, there's nothing that the fleas can do. They're trying for the, con the pyro. Sorry, trying to get the constable. At least the pyro is going to be stopped somewhere by the venom, but then, hey, there's that lotus. It's Line of sight is blocked to the venom, so at the very least, the venom is able to get some free pyro hits. Until it gets slowed down. Nice use of slow there, coming in from FFC. The venom able to sit. Able to be destroyed, saving that pyro thanks to the constable slow so that the venom cannot chain stun the pyro. Just to slow that fire rate down enough. But at the same time, Paul Bello doing what they did the last time, using the attacks as distractions to expand. Granted, these are naked expansions, but the whole point is that your opponent feels pressure. Their opponent feels like they can't move past this point. They feel like this line is the line. Cannot move past that line. And so Paul is just expanding behind that, making sure that it's taken advantage of. I like that. Like I said, that's a really good play. The only thing I'd like to see Paul Bello do a bit more of in future games is be comfortable enough starting in positions where you're a bit more capable of taking expansion safely. Like starting these forward positions, like what FFC has done, where it's a bit easier to take the center, a bit easier to take the metal. If you do that on top of the aggressive expansion approach, that's going to be really effective. Because the aggressive expansion does a good job, it's just that Paul Bello hasn't managed to harm FFC enough that it's actually going to be a thing. Like, the way they did it last game, where they were doing enough damage to Milan Rouge that Milan Rouge could not expand at all, or couldn't effectively expand, and their economy stagnated, is not what's happening here. FFC is having no problems keeping their economy going. They started in a position that makes it easier. They're in a position right now where they have nothing really stopping them. All that's really happening is that Paul Bello is keeping themselves alive. And allowing themselves to expand somewhat with some distraction. But even then, FFC is going to find out sooner or later that that's a thing. They haven't figured out yet, but they will. And when that happens, well, it's done. It's naked. There's nothing stopping it. And FFC can both attack into Paul Bello's main base, or at least defend a counterattack, and attack these naked expansions. Milan Rouge had to make a choice between the two of them. FFC does not. So, I like Paul Bello's approach. It's just important to note when your opponent is not actually being harassed to the point that they can't build up. Aggressive expansion is always good. Just please start in a position where it's easier to get safe expansions. Because, like I said, this should be a safe expansion. This should be a safe starting point, And it's not even a safe expansion. Also, excess. Oh, wait. Ooh, this is actually a possible point. FFC only has 20 metal per second coming in here. At the same time, only 10 for Paul Bello. But that's the one thing that could even things out. Is that FFC is not actually using the economy they have. If they... If Paul Bellows managed to get this caretaker up, they got that up earlier. That'd almost be better, because Paul Bellow would actually have a production advantage despite an economic disadvantage, at least for now. See, the economy is actually considerably closer. But as it is, it's only going to be close for a little while. FFC is dealing with this. They do have their own caretakers being built up. Paul Bellow is a little behind on the caretaker game. They haven't quite crossed that caretaker gap, or filled the caretaker gap, rather. So, again, it's still... It's still in favor of FFC. It's just, I like that Paul Bello is in a position where they are kind of able to deal with it. Granted, here's what I was talking about, though. 
FSC coming in with a worker, not even coming with military, just coming in with a worker. These fleas could have dealt with it before the Lotus got built, but now the Lotus is up. There's nothing to stop it. Paul going for the gunship plant. Side sneaky gunship plant as well, trying to go for that flank. Again, not a bad idea if they were even in economy with FFC, but they're not. And their expansions are being destroyed. They haven't really been able to take advantage of the pressure because they had some pressure and they stopped the pressure. And FFC is not feeling any pressure, is not respecting any pressure for sure. And that leaves Paul Bellow in a situation where they really can't do much. They have this gunship line being built up, but that's taking resources away from their spiders, which means it's taking resources away from the main defense coming in here, which means FFC can walk all over Paul Bellow right now. They haven't done it yet, but they could. There's nothing stopping them effectively. And that to me is that that means that FFC is going to be basically in a situation where they are they're going to be able to just choose when they win. That's it. Paul Bello, if they get this gunship plant up and actually start building some locust rapiers or whatever, both locust and rapiers, and they get some harassment around the back line, I could see that potentially turning into a distraction for FFC that would free up the front line somewhat. But I think FFC would just go, you know what? Fine. Build a few more units, go around the back lines, set up an archangel get the defenses going, and then that'll be it. The front line will be completely unaffected because there's enough units here and enough money in FFC's coffers as well as enough income that FFC can do both. Paul Bello can really only do one. So I like the idea for surprise. It's just the money isn't there. Relatively speaking, the money isn't there. And FFC, they could attack any time. And they might even just counterattack. They might just go, oh, gunships. Actually, they are going to go that because they are going to scout out the gunships before they're even done. Right as the gunship plant finishes, Pyro spots it, not able to be stopped, and that's it. That's it. The surprise is gone. Surprise is ruined. There's no way that Paul Bello can come in with the gunships. I mean, I like the way they were aggressive in their expansion attempts and went around the back and did all that cool stuff, but unfortunately, their main play, their main backline sneaky play it's not going to work. And that's the thing I'm noticing with Paul Bello. They are a sneaky player. That seems to be their entire style is try to find cheesy, sneaky ways of getting in, which, I mean, I un I like I like the fact that Paul Bello is, is comfortable with aggressively expanding. I don't like the fact that Paul Bello is seemingly only comfortable with sneaky, tricky plays. Because at high level, sneaky, tricky plays don't work. Partly because your opponent just has too much money. I mean, even if they are tricked, they'll be able to recover, no problem. And partly because... If you're going for sneaky, tricky plays, you aren't really able to deal with a situation where your opponent just is playing safe. Which FFC wasn't, but still, it's wasn't really actually taken advantage of. All we really saw was expand, ex aggression over here, expansion along here. We didn't see, say, aggression along here to take out the expansions to the side. So yeah, we can see Paul Bello definitely is comfortable when they are in a position of complete advantage. When they can stop their opponents from expanding in the first place, they're very comfortable. They can play a bit more of a macro game. But clearly their entire game plan is built around sneakiness and built around ripping their opponent apart before their opponent can get built up. And I really would like to see how, they're, how they can play if they have a bit more of a comfortable view on a straightforward game while doing the aggressive expansion, because that's always a good idea. You always want to aggressively expand if you can. Like when you attack, expand behind it all the time. Great thing that Paul Bello has. The only thing is... When you're fighting, when you're playing a game normally, don't try to be sneaky. Try to get more money than your opponent. And then if you have more money than your opponent and they're still making it hard for you, then be sneaky. Or if you have about as much money as your opponent, then be sneaky. I mean, it'll be a little bit harder if you have more, you have a better attrition, then you will be able to at least hold them at bay while you're doing the sneaky bits. But yeah, that's fine. That's normal play, honestly. Like being sneaky when you're even and aggressively expanding, that's all good fundamental normal play. And Paul Bellow has some of that. They just seem to be a bit underconfident in their ability to actually play a long-form macro game. And again, I get it. FFC is very strong, and they probably were thinking I could go for a bit of a cheese strategy and win that way. It's just, that's why FFC is so strong, is that they don't worry about that stuff. It doesn't affect them. Not to mention, like I said, this map is so big relative to the unit speeds that are usually used on the map, especially for Spiderbot Factory, that it just isn't really possible to cheese out your opponent to stop them from expanding beyond their main base. Even if you attack from the front, they can still go around the back. Red Comet, at least, there's that corner, and that's pretty stuck. There's not a whole lot of ways out of that. Trojan Hills, on the other hand, you're not going to easily stop them from expanding back here if you're attacking from this angle to their main base that's on the northeast. So, yep. Anyway, that is going to be it for the Swiss portion. I think there's going to be a tiebreaker, but I'm not entirely sure. I mean, 
there should be a tiebreaker, I would think. It's... Yeah, unlucky and Orphelius. Oh, and I think Orphelius is just going to forfeit. So, yeah, unlucky. FFC, RAR 400, and unlucky are moving on to the bracket stage. So we'll be back once that gets going. But we'll wait waiting on that for now. So stay tuned for the bracket stage as FFC, RAR 400, and Unlucky try their best to win and beat each other in presumably single elimination. <laughs> 